Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to use your poser content in Daz Studio and to add all of your content so that you can use it there. Now there's a very good reason why you might want to do that and that's simply that Daz Studio has better figures and if you can't get the figures into poser then get poser into Daz Studio. So what we're going to want to do is to import your poser runtime. So I around about poser 6 just created a runtime on my D drive called poser 6 which contains a runtime here it's probably not the optimal way of doing it it's just historically how I've done it and um, and as I add new content I just add it to this runtime really I ought to just get rid of all that other stuff but it doesn't matter um, so what we need to do is load Daz Studio and somewhere either here docked or over on this side or or docked in there somewhere is the content library and in the content library you'll see it's subdivided by source category so there's Daz Studio which is the main one that you'd use in Daz then there's poser other import formats etc and what you want is the poser format so you click to open that and you right click add a runtime directory and for me it's on my D drive and you choose the parent directory that has the runtime and then click on the runtime so that it appears down here and then you just do select folder and it's as simple as that I've now got a folder here called poser 6 which I can open and more or less the same categories so I'm going to go to figures there are some minor problems that you need to worry about but you can now add all of your props and your figures and um, there are some things for example materials are not all going to work superfly materials definitely don't work um, any parametric materials are not going to work but a lot of the uh, simple texture materials will work so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to load a Victoria figure so people so I'm now in my poser folder and I'm going to uh, female and I want Victoria so this is a bit cramped because I don't usually work at this small level Victoria 4.2 and here's my Victoria figure now I'm going to add a texture and here's the material room on my poser drive I'm going to open that and I'm going to go to uh, people so I've categorized my material room you might not have and I'm going to go female same as I did before and then I'm going to go Victoria for blah, 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 open that so as you can see that a bit more shrink that down a bit and I'm going to go to Victoria 4 and then I'm going to load a uh, material here so I'm going to load let's say felony so felony here I'm just going to add the full mat and there you go so now what I have is felony in Daz Studio so you might be wondering why I'd want to do that well the first thing is that Daz Studio has much better lighting and much better support for high dynamic range or resolution images uh, range images I guess um, the second is that if you want to use Genesis you can't use Genesis 3 and 4 up to 9 and 10 9 whatever it is in poser so use your poser figures in Daz Studio and it's the next best thing yes you lose the convenience of, of poser that you have learned how to use but it's not that difficult to learn how to use Daz Studio and it's free so here's my my figure and I've added this felony map but watch what happens when I render so I'll just select her head frame her head here so we're not looking at her boobs the whole time and get demonetized and now I'll just do a quick render which is going to happen off the screen so I'll bring that in and you'll see the main issue which interestingly enough is similar to the main issue that you get with uh, Superfly when you render a uh, Firefly texture which is that it's way too shiny so what uh, Daz Studio does is it it 
does its best to reconstruct the material, but but really all it's just doing is, uh, let me show you a bit easier. So if I go to scene and then I choose my Victoria 2 that I've just imported, I could rename her here, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to choose head so we can see what's going on here. And then I'm going to go down to surfaces and I'm going to open here so we can see her face. And you can see it, it, really what it's just done is it's taken the basic maps across. So it's taken the diffuse color. It's probably taken the bump, maybe a displacement. No, it's not even done displacement. Maybe there isn't one on this. I don't know. And then it's tried to copy across the um, opacity, which is transparency and ambient. So it's really just the basic materials that would show up if you were setting up a Firefly render in, in uh, Poser. But one of the problems, as I said, is that they're always too shiny. So if I take this face, what I'm looking for here in the uh, in the surfaces tab. So I've got the head selected, surfaces, skin face, but you'd work through the whole body is I'm looking for the glossiness. You see here 94.2. So if I turn that down to say 60% glossy and you saw that immediately lose glossiness. And now if I render that. you see that's pretty good compared to what it was before. Hi, future Matt here. I forgot to mention this when I did the tutorial, but when you load your texture from Poser onto your Poser character, if you go into my dad's library and then you're looking for somewhere in shader presets, a folder called DS defaults. I don't know exactly where that will be. Maybe you can search for it here. And what this enables you to do is to add a default style to the shader you've you've just uh, added. So you've you just added a material for felony in this particular case. But in Daz Studio, what it has is is different types of base shader, which is like a template you could think of. So I think by default, it's this one or maybe this glossy one. But uh, what you really want, depending on how much you want to work the the shader up, or the uh, material and make it more like the lovely Daz shaders which are really quite nice you might want to look for one called uh, ds skin i think it's called let's have a look ds ds skin so if i go down here and show you the surfaces and select the face you've just got those basic materials and some basic settings for um, glossiness and specularity and stuff like that if i add this ds skin shader it will Blend with this shader and it will give you a template. I'll add it now. And it just adds some extra nodes here for scatter and just to enable you to make this uh, a slightly better looking texture. You'll have to do some extra work here. Scatter is a bit like um, um, subsurface shading. And then when you render that, you'll get a slightly better quality and you can tweak those additional details. So there's the, the render that I just got from that. So um, this would apply whatever prop or thing you're importing from Poser. When you want to change the material, you might want to use these defaults to create. So I can go back to here. So it's now just a glossy basic or a tune type shader cartoon. Um, you know, it, it's up to you what you're trying to create. But you can use these to give you a better template to work from. OK, so back to the main show. So it's simply a matter of going through your figure and changing the surface glossiness. Now, for the lips, for example, you might want that a little bit more glossy. So say 75 percent. And uh, also, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the lips were not bump mapped very well. So you'd need to go through and tweak these values. So here, see, there's no bump map on the lip at all, barely. But they're a bit shinier, just to give them a bit of interest. So let's go through and see why there's no bump map really showing up. So bump strength, 0.84, which is clearly not enough. So let's say 50%. I don't know if that value is going to be remotely appropriate, but, you know, it's always just a matter of circling down until you 
get the level you want. Okay, so that's actually looking quite nice. You could even perhaps go a tiny bit higher there. Uh, let's say perhaps 75%. One of the big problems with bump maps, in my opinion, in um, Poser, and especially Dad Studio, is that everybody sets the bump and displacement way too high so that you can see the pause. And there you go, 75%. That looks really nice, doesn't it? And I'd possibly take the glossiness down as she doesn't have makeup on. Then you'd want to work through the eyes and the, the various components of the body. But let's say that we're happy with that now. Let's say that I've done that and I've worked all the way through this figure. So I I have a material that I like. So I could save that as a material. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as a, as a figure. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my content library. And I'm going to go to... Uh, up to here I'm going to shut that down and I'm going to go to my DAS studio formats now so this is now good to use in DAS and I'm going to go into my DAS library people and I'm going to create a, a new directory so I'm going to right click on people create subfolder I'm going to call that Victoria 4 Victoria 4 so now I've got a folder there for Victoria 4. I could create more subfolders, but I'm not going to. So with Victoria 4 selected in the scene, which we know she is now, all I have to do is go plus here, and I'm going to do scene subset. Otherwise, it's going to save everything in the scene. So I do scene subset, and we'll call her, what she called, felony. Felony. And that's going to save. And up here are the options. It always does these tone mapper and environment options. I would turn that off. Um, and now all I just do is accept. And now I've got felony. So when I double click this, it'll load Victoria and the new texture that I've created. But supposing I just wanted to save the material instead. Well, I click plus and I'm going to go to uh, material preset. So a shader is an individual surface. A material is a collection of materials. So I'm going to go material preset and I'm going to call this felony mat. And now I'll get the choice which surfaces that I want to save. So we'll just accept and save everything. Let's say I'd work through that. So now I've got felony mat as a material set and I've got felony the character. So now supposing I have a different body shape that I've loaded from Poser, but I like that mat, I can apply the material to the different body shape. And that really is it. It's, uh, it's not that difficult to create a DAS compatible library of poser stuff of course you can always just install your poser stuff directly into um into daz anyway so here's my poser directory but if i go to my daz directory so if i go program files my daz is here so I'm at my daz library you'll see within there there's a runtime and you can install your poser stuff directly into that runtime anyway um, I don't recommend that you have two libraries of stuff because why bother? But if you wanted to be able to access it in DAS without having to do the steps I've just shown, that's another way of just installing your Poser content. Um, as I say, you know, why have two lots of directories if you don't need it? But hopefully, guys, you'll find that useful. So now I can use, I've got my, my uh, Victoria 4 stuff. I can add my my Genesis stuff here. Okay, so I'll just add a Genesis Thomas, whatever that is. So this is now Genesis 9 working alongside uh, Victoria. And I can apply all of my poses to Victoria. Now, the one problem that you can have is if you've saved a figure, so there you go, there's Thomas being loaded in. Um, excuse me, making funny noises with my tummy. I'll just select Thomas, move him out the way. Oh, okay, for some reason Thomas is loaded attached to... Oh no, I was changing the, the 
camera, silly me. Right, so just choose that, move him out of the way there. Don't know why I did that before, it seemed logical. Um, right, so now I've got Genesis 9 alongside Victoria, so you don't have to sacrifice your your characters. But as I, as I was saying, if you have characters in Poser where you've saved them with morphs attached that you've created, then that can cause problems importing into Daz Studio. And uh, one of these days, I may make a tutorial on how to overcome that. But for now, hopefully you find that useful, guys. So now you can do Genesis and your favorite library of poser stuff that you built up over years. And this could be uh, figures, it could be props, it could be environments, anything you like. Uh, the only caveat is that you can't apply parametric materials. That's any materials. Let's go into poser. Any materials that use these variables and, um, you know, these these kind of things. Anything that just uses textures and anything that just uses the root node. So, okay, I need to select something for that to work. Anything that basically what Daz does is imports these settings as best it can, but it doesn't do maths operations basically so um that small limitation notwithstanding i think that you'll agree that it's actually tremendously beneficial at times to be able to bring your your poser characters into daz and have them working alongside your genesis figures um you know it's it's the next best way uh given the fact that bondware absolutely refuses to make Genesis compatibility in Poser. Anyway, there you go. Uh, have a great day and I'll speak to you again soon.